notice in this question, you've got sine and cos. If you think of sine as your y coordinate and cos as your x coordinate, this question really looks like this. And one of the thir things you learned in grade 11 is if you have two variables in an equation and you only have one equation, you can't solve it. So if I gave this question to you just like this, as minus 3x minus y squared minus 3 equals 0, there'd be nothing you could do with that to solve for x and y. There'd be an infinite amount of answers. Yes? Oh, yeah, cos is x and sine is y. Sorry. Good. If I give it to you this way, still couldn't solve it. Yeah. So sine is y and cos is x, and if you wrote it that way, you couldn't solve it because you have two variables. But one of the big ideas, and it's called an identity because it's always true, one of the big ideas we learned in this unit is that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And what this does is gives us a second equation with y and x. And in grade 10 and in grade 11, you learned about systems of equations, that if you have two equations with two things that you don't, two variables you don't know, you can use either substitution or elimination to solve. And this question will do the same thing. Since you know that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, you can break this up in two different ways. You can get cos squared by itself by moving the sine squared to the other side. You could also get sine squared by itself by moving cos squared to the other side. So not only will you know that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, you also have in your mind that sine squared by itself is 1 minus cos squared, and cos squared by itself would be 1 minus sine squared. And if you notice on the formula sheet where our first formula was s equals theta r, the second formula on your formula sheet is sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Now when we look at our equation, our original equation, can you see that we have a cos squared in that equation? And since we know that cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, we can substitute that in. So we rewrite the whole equation, negative 3 sine theta minus, and whenever you substitute something in, put it in brackets, 1 minus sine squared theta minus 3 equals 0. Now we have an equation that only has sine, and if we rearrange this, we can make it look like something we can factor. If I distribute the negative, can you see that my sine squared will be positive? I'm going to write that first. Then I'm going to write minus 3 sine theta, just so it's in the form of something that I can factor. And then I'm going to have a minus 1 and another minus 3, which will give me minus 4. factoring. That's the only way you can get sine squared. Sine and sine. Now to get 4, we're going to have some possibilities, right? It's either going to be 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. Okay. Now thinking of that, you have to think of one that gets you 3 if you add or subtract the outside and the inside. So 1 and 4 is the only possibility. I need to get a negative 3. So I'm going to make my outside negative 4 and my inside positive 1. Quick check, boil it out again. Do my first ones match? Do my last ones match? Do my outside and inside combine to give me negative 3? Since that all works, 
we can now say, well, sine theta is equal to negative 1 or sine theta is equal to 4. 1 is on your pi plate. We know that that value is equal to, or sorry, negative 1 is on our pi plate. The y value is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. Is 4 on your pi plate? No. Usually when things are not on your pi plate, you need your calculator. But this one can still be solved without your calculator. And it goes back to something you learned the first time you learned about sine, cos, and tan. What was one of some of the first things you learned about sine, cos, and tan? Sokotoa, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If I wanted to, I could make this a fraction, right? Let's just quickly draw that triangle. Let's draw an angle theta here. Let's make this side 4 and this side 1. What's wrong? I didn't draw it to scale. Let's, should we try to draw it to scale? What's the problem? Hypotenuse always needs to be the largest value, right? You would never be able to draw a right angled triangle where the opposite side is 4 and the hypotenuse is 1. This is not possible. So that's why we can solve it without our calculator. If you typed sine inverse of 4 into your calculator, it's going to tell you error because it's not possible. Because if you tried to draw that triangle, you'd have a hypotenuse that's less than the opposite side, which you wouldn't be able to do. Okay? You need to show that you know that it's not possible either by writing not possible or putting a big X through that side some sort of indication that you know that it's not possible and that our only answer is going to be theta equals 3 pi over 2.